Hey everyone, um, today we are continuing on in my series where I'm interviewing different members of the Families Fly Free membership to kind of tell you their firsthand experience, um, what they like about it, um, what surprised them and, and how it's been able to help them. So today I've got Cindy Brennan with me. And Cindy has been a member for over a year. So you were one of the first people to join the membership mm -hmm. when I created it. Mm -hmm. um, so you should have um, lots of good, good experience over a year. Um, but let's start by just having you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, where you live, the types of travel you like to do. Sure. Um, we live right outside of Chicago. So we're about 30 miles west. Um, and I have, so it's, you know, my husband and two children, uh, which we've been traveling with them. I was trying to remember some of our trips and the first time we flew, my son was just about to turn one and we went to Disney world. Um, so, but now he's 17 and my daughter just turned 21. Um, uh, so happens, you know, <laughs> darn it, doesn't it? <laughs> It yes, and you know, different people. I remember told us our grandparents were telling us, you know, oh my gosh, don't go to Disney World. You know, he won't remember it. Um, you know, go when they're older. But um, I'll tell you what, it's it, it's been you know great to to travel. We've driven, we've flown, um, and we still haven't been to all the places you know we wanted to get to. So um, traveling has always been a thing. I, um, you know, I think I've had a handle on hotels, you know, I've, uh, you know, I'll tell my husband, I found I can do a week, for, I've got enough points, you know, we can go for a week, but um, air, airline travel has been something that I thought I wish I could find, you know, a better way to do air travel. And I think that's when I found your I originally found your blog, mm -hmm. um, although I think I may have seen it on a Today Show segment, and then I was I was looking at your blog, um, and then you put together the the program, the Families Fly Free. But um, you know, so then I I've been looking at 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 your information to to figure out how can I fly free. So what intrigued you? got you to join the membership. And I should say like from when you joined, like it has really evolved. We've added a lot more features and benefits mm -hmm. to it um, since then. But what initially um, was the reason you joined, you think? I think, well, initially uh, it was learning more about Southwest. Um, we can easily get to Midway Airport um, in Chicago. Uh, I fly out of there. I know I've heard that, you know, you come out of Indiana and, and fly out of Midway. Yep. Um, it's very convenient for us. And, um, you know, I had, I had found good rates uh, going out of Southwest, but uh, we were looking, I started looking at the credit card and applied for the credit card uh, and earned the companion pass. So, uh, with the companion pass, now we've been able to fly. We flew three times in the last year, which, you know, I've never probably flown more than once on a, on a family, tr you know, trip for the year. So we've gone, and this was during COVID. So right. actually, yeah, that's Southwest, impressive. right. We applied in February. <laughs> yes. We applied in February of 2020 COVID hit in March. And then um, we earned the companion pass, I want to say in like August, but we weren't able then, then we weren't able to travel for a while. Um, but we did the end of December. And then this year, this summer, we flew out in what, May, June, and July. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, it seemed like we had a nice little window there of, of where you could travel, you know? Yes. Without, yeah. without so, too much, too much fear. Right. Right. So then we, I felt that we, we finally, you know, we took advantage of it. So, and that's, I mean, one of my main goals is to shift families from the mindset of one big vacation a year. Right. I think that's how most families operate and realize instead yeah. that travel can turn from a vacation to just a lifestyle. 
Um, like I did a recent podcast just talking yeah, about right. how, you know, instead of saying you're going on vacation, it just becomes we're traveling or we're taking a trip because you do it so often. It's right. Not just that once a year. So you were able to kind of make that shift. It sounds like. Yes. Uh-huh. And it was kind of like a one big vacation. And then, you know, oh, we can take a weekend trip. Um, you know, we can, we've got points and we can do that too. Um, so that's been, um, that's been great. And, you know, well, my husband's been very conservative. I have been too. And, you know, he said, we can't get another credit card. Well, then, I mean, the Chase now, <laughs> now the Chase Sapphire um, preferred uh, came out. Let's see, I got the card for myself with the 80,000 offer, and then they even increased it. So my husband got the card. <laughs> <laughs> too. So, you know, we're definitely looking to do some travel on our own. Now the kids are, are, um, are older. So we are looking for that as well. And um, listening to some of your webinars, um, you know, we've got a few things where, you know, you've had the monthly themes on Hawaii, on um, national parks. So there's definitely you know, I've got notes where, you know, we want to go as a family and where the two of us want to go. Right, right. Um, let's go back to when you're talking about, you know, concern about adding a card, because I think that's a very common concern out there. And my husband was the exact same way when we started doing this. He was like, hold, we don't want to get credit cards. That's not good. Um, but then once he saw, you know, we did one. And then once he saw the benefits of that, then he was like, okay, I think I get it. Let's, let's continue. But, um, and you know, the, my process doesn't teach having a ton of credit cards, right? I mean, you really can do it with, you know, two to three. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to, you can add hotel cards if you want, but in ter terms of the flying process. So I don't know, mm -hmm. just speak to that a little bit in terms of how you guys got over that reservation and why it was a concern. And did you really find it to be what you thought the concern you thought it would be? Um, it, well, it has not been a, you know, a concern. You still, uh, you, you still keep your, your credit. Um, you know, we looked at our chase. Now we do have with the chase cards, um, I'm able to go on to the chase app and look at our, uh, credit journey, I think mm -hmm. it's called. Yeah. And you're able to see, I think when I applied for the one credit card, my points went down like 18 points. Uh, but then within, two months, my credit score went back up. So, I mean, it does pay off to have, um, you know, credit cards out there for a while. Uh, and so we've had, we've had that, uh, we've been primarily traveling through uh, Marriott. So uh, the Marriott visa I've used for quite some time. Um, I've done a lot of things where, you know, you stay the four nights, you get the fifth night free. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I know you've talked about the various hotels, um, the various hotel cards. So that's one that I've had for a long time um, by following you, you know, the missing piece was really the airfare. Um, and, you know, I explained to my husband, we, we've got established credit. Um, look at these, you know, offers. We, 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 can, we can take on other credit cards and, you know, we're not using their, you have to use it responsibly to, right. you know, right. they'll give you a large credit line, um, but we're putting on our, you know, our groceries, our uh, going to restaurants. And, oh, the one good thing during COVID, when we got the Southwest card, they had um, several prom promotions that summer with five times groceries, five times restaurants. And so, during that big chunk of the beginning of COVID, um, I I was looking. Well, it was I, I was looking at your webinars, thinking about where could we travel, and then also, you know, looking closer at my credit cards and seeing. So we knew when we wanted to use the Southwest card, we were using it when we went to restaurants, when we went to grocery stores. And that's another thing to really look at the promotions. Um, you have to go back to those pages um, of your credit card to see if there's any promotions because a lot of them you have to register for to make sure that you're getting the most points 
right. um, that you can get on that credit card. And, and we do in the membership, we send out every month um, what promotions the cards that we recommend have. So that's an easy way to stay on top of that. You can just look at that sheet or that page every month and be like, mm -hmm. okay, here's the best card to use for dining this month. And here's the best card to use for, I mean, there's even one that earns double points or something on like gym memberships. I think it's the Hyatt card or something, but you know, mm -hmm. or I mean, here's the best one for travel and here's the best one for groceries and gas. So um, yes. that can be a way that you can get, really start to build up your points um, if, you, if you're able to stay on top of that in an easy way. Mm -hmm. um, so what his main concern was the, the impact to your credit score Right. And so mm -hmm. you haven't found that to be a problem. It, it no, it is not a, it's not a problem at all. And, mm -hmm. and typically, you know, with credit scores, there is a temporary drop, as you mentioned, when you first apply mm -hmm. for a card, usually it's just, I don't know, a couple, five points, something like that. Right. But the fact that they're extending you credit is a much weightier factor in your score. So once they extend you that credit, that's a, that's a much higher benefit to your score than them checking your credit once. Um, so that that's why these people, and again, I don't teach very many cards or flipping cards at all, but um, mm -hmm. these people that do that, I mean, some of them, you know, they maintain scores in the 800s and that's, that's why they, and if, mm -hmm. because they do it responsibly, as you pointed out, they don't carry a balance either. Right. Um, but, and so I also liked what you talked about a couple of times here of, um, you know, times when you couldn't travel, you still, you were still collecting points and you were still thinking about where you wanted to travel. Yes. And so I hear a lot from people, well, I'm not sure if I should join the membership now because I'm not ready to travel, say till next year. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so very important. Like you said, we have a lot of great offers right now. And we did last year too. So mm -hmm. you can earn all this stuff right from your house. You don't have to be on a plane or on a trip, right? You're buying right. groceries, you're ordering carry out, you're, you know, and you right. can earn the points on all that. You can take advantage of that 100,000 point Chase Sapphire preferred offer from your house. And then mm -hmm. these points, if you understand how it works, it don't expire. And in the meantime, mm -hmm. you can be making notes of, like you said, here's where the two of you want to travel. Here's where you want to take your next big family trip. And you can be planning that now, getting the process in place, getting all your points ready so that when you are ready to travel, all you have to do is push the button and you're ready to go. Right, right. And um, I think something you have mentioned in one of your webinars, this something that I thought um, for the longest time is that you had to have a job that required you to travel. And I can remember being out, you know, a long time ago and someone talking about, oh, their whole family was flying, you know, to Hawaii. And I thought, oh, yeah, because, well, you know, um, she flew on business quite a bit right. and got points. And I thought that was, I did too. Um, <laughs> the way. Yes. And I, and I, and I, I know you have said that, and that's been amazing through this, that, you know, you don't have to, to fly. My, my husband flies occasionally, um, but you know, not, not very often. So uh, we've been able to do this. Yeah. With credit card promotions. And um, th now that I really want to look at points, you know, I've, I thought, wait, I need to, to find some other ways. How can I earn more points? And you have a list out there, I think on your blog with a hundred, hundred ways to earn points. And if you go through that, you'll probably find a few other ways where, oh, I, I can, I can do that. Um, I can, like one of the things I found was make it count with marathon. <laughs> so I have my family, I'm like, wait, we've got to go to a marathon gas station. And um, yeah, who knew you could earn <laughs> points by pumping gas? But, but and, and we even have some members points. that like have farms where they really use a lot of gasoline to power their equipment and stuff. So they really can rack up some points doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're, you know, um, it, it's kind of become a game, I think, too, where, you know, how can I, how can I get the most points? Yes, it absolutely, this is sort of a game. That's what makes it fun is how much yeah. can you get for how little, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll put a link to the 101 ways to earn Southwest points um, below this video um, mm. here, since you referenced that, because that is a good, it will surprise you some of the different ways you can earn. And I do, I never teach earning points by flying, right? I have the same way. I always thought you earned points 
by paying for flights or miles by paying for flights. And that's mm -hmm. not how we teach it at all. You never, ever have to pay for a flight. We don't want you to pay for a flight. That's the whole idea here is to fly for free. So we show you other ways to earn points. So you never, ever have to pay for a flight. Right. Um, okay. So let's talk about kind of what your favorite thing is about the membership. What have you enjoyed the most um, over the last year? Um, well, I really, I like how it's evolving to, you know, a monthly theme, uh, learning, learning about more places to travel. Um, oh, after our trip, now we ended up going the end of December, this end of just, I said, okay, we're going to do it. We went to Florida. <laughs> um, we stayed mostly outside. We, I felt that we traveled very safely and, um, uh, but one of the things from that trip, I came back and I thought, gosh, now I need to find a way on the rental car. You know, we flew there for free. Um, we had a few uh, free days in the hotel and then we went to a, um, an Airbnb, but um, the car rental. And then that was something that you had like a couple months later, um, you know, uh, you've had a webinar on how to save on car rentals. Mm -hmm. um, so there's more and more information, um, I feel, on various places to travel. I learned a lot from the travel app webinar the other night. So, um, you know, there's, ju there's just more to your membership. I find that it's just really getting more interesting. Yeah. And so what Cindy's talking about here is we do um, weekly, almost weekly live webinars, sometimes twice a week. Um, on different travel topics. So we do try to pick a theme for the month. Um, so it could be like you mentioned Hawaii one month, national parks one month, we did cruising one month, and then sometimes we'll just do travel tips. So when car rentals became such a big problem, then we knew we needed to help our members with um, what's the best way to save or even get your hands on a car rental, <laughs> right? So we've actually now done two webinars on that topic because it's it's been such a continuing problem. So you do get a lot more from your membership than just, you certainly were going to learn how to fly free and we're going to help you with hotels, but you get all these other travel tips too. Um, and not just from me, but from other members and from other team members so that um, you get a variety of perspectives, I think from young families to retirees to singles. Um, we have all types of uh, members. Um, do you feel like um, that you got your money's worth um, uh, from the membership and, and you joined when it was less expensive, lucky you. So you were one of the early members to lock in that lower cost. Um, mm -hmm. But even at the higher cost, I mean, do, what do you think about in terms of value? Do you get that back? Do you get more than that back in terms of um, being able to fly free more or stay free in hotels any or any travel? Um, Oh, well, I mean, even during, um, during COVID, I mean, we have flown round trip three times. And so I think right there we have gotten, yeah, we've definitely gotten our money's worth. Um, and we still have points to fly. We'll probably fly again, um, this December. So yeah, I'm figuring, you know, we've flown four times, probably could have flown more, um, if it wasn't. Uh, for COVID, if you're going on a vacation, you're thinking, I booked the flight, I'm done. Right. Um, I think that's a, another philosophy that you have taught that, and it doesn't take much time, sign into Southwest and you, you need to be checking it because there's a few, there's the hack um, that you have taught us. And um, I have really saved from that initial booking um, each time we have flown it has changed and I have flown for less points than I originally booked. Right. And see right there is just as a, a huge savings too. even, even in points, like the value of the points that you're saving that will allow you to take maybe a whole other trip. Um, you know, if you hadn't been able to get those points back in your account. So, and that's, you know, we talk, we're talking about a lot about Southwest here, and that is how I teach people to fly around the U S and the Caribbean, because, you can play so many little hacks and all of them are above board. You just have to know that they're there. You need to know how to maximize them. Um, you need, just need to know the process like Cindy's talking about. Uh, just just becomes a regular part of what you do, uh, but you can mm -hmm. save so much versus any other airline. And then we do teach how to fly to Europe too on a different airline. And that's mm -hmm. pretty much what we stick to in the membership um, mm -hmm. is US, the Caribbean and Europe. Uh, 
so yeah, we have lots of good tips and hacks and even phone numbers to call Southwest and bypass the hours long wait and, and all of that good stuff. So in addition to money saving, I really feel like it's time saving too, um, because you don't have to spend the time trying to find all this information. We just tell you only what you need to know, and then you can take action on it. Mm -hmm. um, now, in terms of, you know, the, the cost, the current cost of the membership, what would you tell people who maybe are hesitant about spending that, or um, they feel like it sounds too good to be true that they could forever be flying their whole family free? What would your advice be to them? What would you tell them? Uh, I would say that I think you're very realistic. You're very um, easy to work with. These are not uh, credit cards that have super high annual fees. Um, anything that uh, you talk about is just very, very reasonable. Um, so it's it's just easy to to do and incorporate these things um, teaching. So you think like once you, once you learn the process, it's, it's easy to do. Right. And it does really work. It, 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 yeah. And it's not <laughs> anything that it, it's just, it's, it's an easy thing to do. You can incorporate it in your everyday, you know, everyday life. You're checking Southwest. You're, it's just a, a very easy process there are a few things that you do need to know. And I mean, I, for the longest time, I thought, oh, I know how to book a hotel. Oh, I'm going to go book this air, you know, airplane. I would look for a couple days, book the fare and be done with it. But there's more to it than that. And it's not difficult. It's just, um, it's just knowing a few, a few things and, it's, it's easy. It's an easy process. I have referred back to a few of your segments. So on your app uh, that we have now too, if I'm, uh, I was looking to change one flight. Oh, and then I did have the companion pass attached. Um, so I, I looked at your uh, segment on that, watched it for a couple of minutes and knew what I had to do and then went on to Southwest and took care of it. So yeah, and, and we have, we do have the app. I love the app too, because I feel like many of us now function on our phones a lot more than we do on our computers. So like I said, all of the videos and the webinars and the instructional information that we have is all in the app. So it's easy to reference and or listen to on the go. Like even if you're not sitting there watching it, um, you can just listen to it. And we do a lot of um, like what you're talking about there, screencasts where we actually walk you through the process of what it looks like rather than trying to read a post that somebody wrote of do this first and then do this for you actually can watch us do it, which I think is a lot. It's like, you know, awesome. just like looking up something on YouTube or whatever, you know, it's right. much easier to follow along with what someone else is visually doing. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, anything else that um, you think others should know about why they should join or um, uh, well, I, you know, I just, uh, thought of now with our chase Sapphire preferred, uh, we've got our points there and we're looking to go to Ireland in the spring. Yay. So I've established an Avios account. And that was something I learned when we met one-on-one, -on -one. um, you did have a webinar on traveling to Ireland that you referred me to. So, um, I've listened to that, but um, it is during the non-peak time that we're planning to go and I've got my points and uh, ready to transfer to, free to Ireland <laughs> and for, yeah, uh, to transfer to Avios and we're going to, we're going to fly there for free. I know. Isn't that amazing? That was I one can't of the, believe it. my yeah. favorite things was that we were able, the first time we were able to fly to Europe, I was like, I just never thought we would get to Europe and, and we're, we're not paying for it. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, we have a great webinar all about Ireland um, that my colleague Cami did. From yes. she's kind of circum, she and her husband circumnavigated the whole country there, um, uh -huh. and really gave it in detail what to do, where to eat, where to stay, how to rent a car, all that stuff from place to place. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a lot of that kind of stuff in there. So I think that's something that people they don't realize a that it's there and b how helpful that can be and it's not that when you join you have to go watch all of our destination videos but 
suddenly if you're interested in taking a trip to Ireland, you can go watch that one, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's there for you whenever you need it. Um, right. Yep. Well, thanks for coming on and sharing your experience. Um, we do have lots of folks who have, um, you know, kids right in your age range. I've got one who's 17 myself. So that are right at that headed off to college or young adulthood yes. stage. Uh -huh. And that is a fun stage where we can start to think about, you know, trips for two or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. um, which, and it's amazing though. We teach how families out of life free because you absolutely can do this for families of seven. I think we now have one of eight, um, but you can of course do a whole lot more with two people. And sometimes we can even get into like flying first class territory and stuff if you want. So it just depends on um, what you, what your needs are, where you want to go and how many people. All right. Well, thanks so much, Cindy. And um, we will continue on our series with different members here. And uh, thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you.